There's an old joke that I heard in Jerusalem that the reason why the Orthodox look like there's so many of them because one Orthodox can scream louder than a hundred Jews. <laughs> and the expression is kind of like a, the squeaky wheel gathers the rust or whatever. The rusty wheel gathers the oil or something like that. But sometimes those that seem to make the most noise get the most attention. And I'm sure that you've seen that in the news and possibly your child if it starts screaming to get your attention in the middle of a store <laughs> or whatever the circumstance may be. In this season, as we've gone from Thanksgiving, which seems to always pass by fast because quickly people want to get into shopping and then want to get into you know Christmas because there's always the music in the background. And families are talking about getting a tree you know, and trimming it. People are excited, you know, a little bit because there seems to be this feeling in the air. Even the weather seems to change just for the season. Things have gotten darker, so when you put up lights, it's like, wow, they really stand out. People want to decorate their homes. People want to enjoy. But then you always have, and you know what it's like, someone who says, you can't do that. That's... That decorating a tree, you know, man, that's that's out of, you know, like Isaiah or Jeremiah or that's in the Old Testament, you know. Those those guys were decorating trees. They cut it down. They put lights on it. They ornament it, you know, and they make it into worshiping their God. And they bow down to it. And they sacrifice to idols. And you kind of go, really? When's the last time I ever bowed down to a tree? <laughs> and you know what it's like. I mean, you could take Tolkien you know, or J.R. Tolkien's books, you know, and when you saw an ant, you know, and you kind of thought, well, that's cool, the trees are walking, you know, I mean, it's kind of like, wow, look at that, you know, and, you know, it was kind of fun to see, and you enjoyed it, and then somebody came along and said, no, that's worshiping earth gods, and you went, ew, really? I thought I was just watching a neat movie. Oh, well, but then, you know, there's also something else that's interesting because it says the trees clap their hands and the mountains shout for joy. And the same people that usually tell you why you can't do something will also tell you that every word in the Bible is true. But they don't want to admit what contradicts what they think you should do. So, I guess what I'm trying to say is don't let someone steal your joy. Don't let someone rob you of the peace you have. Don't let someone try to tear down the love you feel at this time of season for your family or your friends or your neighbors that you want to share in and care for because of the time of the season. It's just a good time to have presents, to, hey, go on a hayride. You know, that'd be fun, wouldn't it? to drink some eggnog or enjoy, who knows, maybe a candlelight vigil <gasps> or Lent. Hey, I don't do Lent, but let me lend it to you. <laughs> then it'll be Lent. <laughs> but whatever it is that you do in this season that causes you to refocus and change, you know, the, the life that you're living to something of giving, then what's wrong with that? I mean, come on now. You're taking a step out of yourself in order to enjoy not just yourself, but sharing with others. I mean, all of the music playing can't tell me that you don't have some kind of effect. You know, it doesn't somehow some of it sound good. Let's be real. Every one of us have grown up in this nation that has participated in having a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and we have enjoyed it for hundreds of years and it's become a part of our culture, not just the commercialism. Who cares? Of course it's commercialism. So is buying groceries. <laughs> and most of us probably know more songs about Coke and Pepsi and and who knows, Frosted Flakes, they're great, you know, than we know about church, you know, and about witnessing. So I think 
sometimes still get so carried away with our own personal faith or something that we're dealing with in ourselves that we try to ruin it for someone else. Why ruin Christmas when you can enjoy it for what it is? Now, for you, I don't know what it is. See, that's the beauty of it. That's why it's a holiday, because anyone can celebrate it any way that they want to. If you decide that you don't want to have a Christmas tree, then don't have one. Hey, you know, enjoy it for what you want to do on that day, because it is a holiday. Now, it's true that there's seasonal pressures that seem to go on, but you know what? There's pressures at your job. There's pressures in your life. There's what we call the pressures from God. You know, I mean, God is working on you to clean up your act, you know, and he's going to keep working on you till the day you die. So guess what? Life is about pressure. Some of what you go through is called barometric pressure. You can notice that, you know, it changed from rain to sunshine. Guess what does that? Barometric pressure. <laughs> God causes the sun to shine and the rain to fall on the wicked and the good. So guess what? It's a neutral. So is Christmas. So let me encourage you in this season of joy. And that's what it really is. It's meant to be a season of joy, of glad tidings of great joy, peace on earth, goodwill towards men. Don't let anyone, for any reason, steal your joy. Don't let them try to rob you of the peace that you have on earth, that the peace that God has given you through Jesus. Don't let them take away the love that God demonstrated in when Jesus was born, when he rose, and when he died. All of those things are right in their place and in their time, but you don't have to run around and kind of like beat people to death with it. Why don't you just celebrate it for what it is, where you are, what you are, and what you're doing. So, to be taxed with Mary as his spouse's wife, being great with child, and so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there was in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was an angel, a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace and goodwill toward men. You know, what's so bad about feeling good? I mean, come on. I bring you good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people. What great joy shall be to all people? That on this day there is born unto you in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ Jesus our Lord. What is so bad? about being glad about the tidings that an angel brings? What's so wrong about Christmas that you can't enjoy? What is so evil that you can't participate in the good news that, guess what? Jesus was born, Jesus did live, Jesus did die, and Jesus rose again. What's so bad about feeling good about it? I have zero tolerance sometimes for those that are so legalistic minded, they forget what it's all about. That are so seeking to create a holiness with their head, they forgot that their heart is saved by those glad tidings of great joy. Because that is the gospel message. I bring you glad tidings of great joy. That's what we are called to do, to bring glad tidings of great joy. So. In this season, don't let someone steal that joy. Don't let someone take away by trying to make you do something that God hasn't said for you to do. Don't try to make Jesus the reason for the season when you don't feel like that's the reason you want to do what you're doing. If you don't feel like it, don't do it. When you're involving your head, you need to involve your heart. And when you put your hand to it, the plow, you need to know what you're doing and why and how. See, no farmer goes out there 
you know, and starts plowing just because he says, you know, today I feel like plowing. Well, you know, today I don't feel like plowing. Tomorrow, I'll feel like plowing. No farmer says, well, you know, I think I should plow every day. And, you know, I think I'll plow every day. Because if he doesn't feel like it, he won't. Because his heart will overrule his head. But the farmer that sits down and considers wisely that he needs to plow in order to get a harvest, that he needs to overrule his heart sometimes with his head in order to do those things that need to be done and to make a straight furrow, goes ahead and does it. And then, as he's doing it, learns how to enjoy it so that he brings his heart and his head and his hands into unity in completing that which he's done. For me, it's a song. I know if I'm plowing a field, if I'm driving a tractor out there in the farm, man, I either got some headphones on, because I'm not going to listen to that engine, <laughs> or I'm singing in my heart, and I'm bebopping, and I'm enjoying myself, because I'm on a tractor, and I'm digging furrows. Okay, I'm disking. See, I know what I'm talking about. You didn't think I ever farmed before. Actually, I worked in the potato field, so maybe I was driving a potato truck. Watch that mirror. <laughs> Let's get under that bocker. <laughs> Anyways, the joy that you should have in these times doesn't matter so much what you're doing, as much as you realize that God is involved with you in doing them. That is where Jesus resides, in your heart. Because he is the one who has said he would come in and live in you and be with you and love you. So as you do what you do, the way you do it and how you do it this season, then enjoy it and bring the joy of the Lord with you. Because you are saved. You can demonstrate glad tidings of great joy, which shall be unto all people. For in this, this season, you show forth those glad tidings by being glad. Wow, really? <laughs> you mean I can celebrate? I don't have to consternate? I don't have to be oppressive? No, you don't. As a matter of fact, all you need to do is do the same thing that shepherds did. Nobody told the shepherds to clean up their act. Nobody told the shepherds to stop shepherding. They just got together and said, hey, let's go check it out. And if you read the context, that's what they did. They got together and talked about going to see this great sight that the angels proclaimed had happened. How Christmas can get so messed up, only a Christian knows. So don't let anyone steal your joy. But enjoy it for what it was meant to be. You and Jesus enjoying this season no matter whether it's santa or grinch or mickey mouse or coca-cola or the polar bears or whatever you can enjoy it such a deal it's such great glad tidings of joy to all people everywhere it's the only time of the year that the entire world knows what's going on especially with those christians over there yes the entire world knows about Christmas.